Hello, this is a Monetize Pro's video tutorial on affiliate marketing. In this video tutorial, I will provide a brief introduction to the basic economics of affiliate marketing, as well as which specific metrics you should keep an eye on. Then, in part two of the video, I will provide additional insight into five proven models that can lead to affiliate marketing success. First, a look at the basic economics of affiliate marketing. Now, of course, affiliate marketing can be very complex, and over the years, the strategies and analytics involved have become increasingly sophisticated. But ultimately, success in affiliate marketing boils down to just four key metrics. Traffic volume, click rate, conversion rate, and commissions. An increase in any of these metrics should lead to a boost in affiliate revenue. By the way, if you're already very familiar with these basics, please stay with me. I promise we will cover more advanced ground later in this video. But first, let's go over those four basic metrics. Firstly, traffic volume. This one's obvious. This is just the amount of traffic that your site receives. This is typically stated in unique visitors per month. Click rate. Click rate is the percentage of those unique visitors who ultimately click on your affiliate links. Conversion rate corresponds to the percentage of those who do click through who end up ultimately completing the desired action, whether that be filling out a lead form or completing a sale on the merchant site. Finally, commission. This is the income that the affiliate marketer receives each time a user completes the desired action. This is sometimes a flat rate per action, such as a cost per lead, or it could also be expressed in terms of a percentage of the total sale. Providing a boost in some areas may prove easier than others, depending on the age of your site, the verticals you're in, the affiliate partners you're working with, and many more. Take for example the case of a product review site that's about 10 years old, let's say, and that's already ranking very well across all the search engines for all of their target keyword terms. They may not be able to build upon their traffic volume much more, so instead, they may want to focus on on-page optimization to drive up their click rate. Whereas a newer site who's coming up in the ranks and isn't receiving very much traffic volume may want to focus on that metric first before they start worrying about on-page optimization. The conversion rate and the commission metrics are often thought of as being outside of the control of the affiliate marketer. But with some determination, a savvy web publisher can make inroads with both. It is true that landing pages and product pages are almost always hosted on the merchant's site and therefore beyond the control of the affiliate marketer's influence. But with frequent statistical analysis and rotation of the affiliate links on your site, you should start to discover which links perform better than others in terms of their conversion rate. Placing these high converting affiliate links in prominent positions on your site and burying the lower converting ones or removing them altogether should lead to an increase in overall site conversion rate. As far as commission is concerned, just know that there is always room for some negotiation. Especially once you've established a good relationship with a merchant, you should be able to go back to them and ask them for a raise, particularly if you're sending them a high volume of quality converting traffic. Just don't be afraid to ask. They want your business as much as you want theirs. Now, in part two, we'll take a look at five proven models that can lead to affiliate marketing success. Specifically, the models I will look into are banner ads, blog rolls, coupons, pricing comparison, and product reviews. Now, frankly, we have noticed in our experience that both blog roll partner centers and display banner ads, while often worthy endeavors for high volume sites, tend to monetize very poorly compared to the other three models. 
but let's take a look into them now anyway. Display advertising, or using banner ads, is very basic. Log in to CJ or share a sale, or whichever network you may be using. Grab the code for, let's say, a 300 by 250 medium rectangle ad unit and pop it into the sidebar of your site. But remember, this is an affiliate marketing banner. You won't get paid on a CPC or CPM basis. In fact, you'll only receive income if the user clicks on and completes the desired action on the merchant's site. CPA style banner ads can work in certain circumstances, but really only if there is a very high correlation between the site and the product being advertised. Otherwise, I usually recommend sticking with CPC or CPM non-affiliate display networks if you do decide to employ banner advertising on your site at all. A good example of CPA-based banner ads can be seen at SugarRay.com, the site of SEO consultant Ray Hoffman. You can see here in the top of the right sidebar two banner ads, one for Raven and another for Quote Roller. These ads likely perform pretty well for Sugar Ray as they are well targeted to her users, though I may question the placement of these ads of other companies' products above the lead form for her own product. But that's another lesson for another tutorial. Bottom line, I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with CPA style banner ads, but I usually like to focus on other more successful affiliate marketing methods instead. The second model which I will look at is the Partner Center or blog roll model. A great example of this can be found at affiliatetip.com. As we scroll down the sidebar, we come across his blog roll. This is a list of a dozen or so links to services which his audience may find useful. But they're not just links to 99designs, Affiliate Summit, Aweber, and so on. These are affiliate links. Let's click on this top one for 99designs. You can see in the URL bar at the top here that this is a CJ link. Should someone become a customer as the result of clicking that link from affiliatetip.com's blog roll, Affiliate Tip would be compensated accordingly. Now in all honesty, this method probably monetizes really poorly. Going back to affiliatetip.com now, there's no call to action or any real context around his blog roll. It's just a list of seemingly random links. That said, there is not really a lot else you could do with this below-the-fold sidebar real estate anyway. You may as well have some affiliate text links here. And if traffic volume is high enough, you may even see a few sales per month from something like this. For our third model, we'll take a look at coupons, or deals. Now the reason why I think coupons form such a great model for affiliate marketing is because the users of such a site are in the buying cycle at the moment that they visit. Think about it, if you're looking for a coupon, you're likely looking to buy something right now. Our first example is couponmom.com, a site that emails members with ways to save money at the grocery store and other retail stores. This site is using affiliate links from coupon.com as well as traditional CPC display advertising to generate revenues. She has a mailing list of over 6 million members to which she regularly sends coupons, and no doubt those email campaigns have high click rates on the affiliate links, because in this case, the affiliate link to the coupon is exactly the product which the users are after. Another example of coupons in action is on mommy blogger site ohsosavvymom.com. Unlike couponmom.com, this particular site is not known just for its coupons. Amy offers product reviews, mommy tips, food recipes, and much more. Occasionally, she will also blog about deals. And here's a post on her site from December, wherein she presents several holiday deals for those seeking last minute gift items. Here's a link for 55% off, 15% off, another 15% off, a free umbrella, and so on. And all of these links are affiliate links. And while the reader of this type of content may not be as firmly in the buying cycle as a couponmom.com user, the offers here are relevant to Amy's audience and they likely perform pretty well. The fourth proven affiliate model that I'll cover 
is product feed aggregation, or more practically known as pricing comparison. Shopzilla provides a great example of a product feed in action. So what am I shopping for? I want to shop today for a Nikon D5100, which is the camera I'm using to shoot this video. The result page brings up numerous listings for that search term, with pricing information displayed within each listing. I can easily scroll through and find the best price for my item, and click through to purchase the product. This $339 option from Ryther Camera looks good. Here I am on the merchant site now. That's right, all of those links on Shopzilla's search results page were affiliate links. A sale here at RytherCamera.com would bring in some income for Shopzilla. Now I already own this camera, so I won't be making a purchase today. But if we go back to Shopzilla, we can take a closer look at the listings. As we scroll down the page here, you can see that there are a lot of listings for this camera and its related accessories. And you can be sure that these prices aren't listed manually. This list is the result of an automated process, specifically a series of API calls from numerous individual merchant price feeds repackaged by Shopzilla into the nice, tidy results page we see here now. This type of site, of course, requires a lot of back-end development, but the beauty is that the user-facing results are entirely automated, with up-to-date pricing and product availability. The fifth and final model I will look into is my personal favorite, the product review model. I like this model because it's relatively easy for anyone to get started with, and because I personally have enjoyed a lot of success using this model in a few different verticals over the course of the past decade. The beauty of this model is that the reader of a product review is usually in the buying cycle for that particular product. So typically, you would have a one-page product review wherein you would point out any benefits and potential drawbacks to the item, followed by, of course, the affiliate link to purchase the product. Because once the reader reaches the end of your review, he may very well be interested in learning where he can buy the product. Don't let him off your page without first giving him the opportunity to click on your affiliate link. ReviewsHQ.org provides a nice example of this model in action. Here is their review of the George Foreman grill. At the bottom of the review, they offer a link to see all customer reviews now. This is actually an affiliate link to Amazon's product page, but they have very cleverly chosen their words here. Clicking a link to see more customer reviews has a lot less pressure than clicking a link that says buy now. But still, once the user clicks that link, the cookie gets dropped on his machine and any subsequent purchase from Amazon will result in a commission for ReviewsHQ.org. Another version of the product review method features a comparison of multiple products. Top10Reviews.com is a great example of this method. Let's check out their flat panel LED TVs page. As you can see, it's a comparison table of what they have deemed to be the top 10 LED TVs in 2014. As you can see, this page actually does offer a lot of useful information, comparing dozens of specs in the comparison table. And if you're ready to make your purchase, you can click through from the affiliate links at the top, which of course links to Amazon.com. No doubt, Top10Reviews.com is a member of the Amazon Associates program. That wraps up this Monetize Pro's video tutorial on affiliate marketing. Check back regularly for more tutorials. And in the meantime, if you have any questions about what you may have learned today, feel free to drop us a line via email. Thank you.